Welcome back to Small Caps. My name is Kerry Stevenson. Today, I'm going to be talking with Andrew Spark. He's the chairman of QMines. The ASX code is QML. Now, these guys have been very busy. They listed just three short months ago. And COVID hasn't stopped these guys. They've got a couple of rigs on site. They are drilling. They are soil sampling. They are on fire. Andrew Spark, welcome to Small Caps. Great to see you. Yeah, thanks, Kerry. Nice to be here. Yeah, another Zoom meeting. Good old COVID is keeping us away a little bit, but it has not stopped you guys. Now, you've made an announcement about a six-month soil sampling digitization program that you're doing. Before yep. we get into that, mm -hmm. just for our listeners, a brief overview of who are QMines. Yeah, great. All right. Well, look, QMines recently listed, as you mentioned, on the 6th of May, so we're a new IPO. Um, and we're a copper, Queensland copper focused um, uh, company. So we've got four assets around Queensland. They're all 100% owned. And two of those assets, assets were actually historic producing copper and gold mines. So, so we're, we've got a, a strong point of difference in that we're more a brownfields explorer that's trying to move to development. So a uh, little bit of a different take. We're fully funded. Uh, we raised about 11.5 million bucks uh, during our IPO. And uh, yeah, we've been had a really busy, good you know, three months start, and and a lot more to go. A tight share registry, uh, a good strong share price, which is heading in the right direction. You listed at thirty cents, currently trading about forty, so it's heading in the right direction. But let's dive into this digitization program on the soil sampling. What that means, and did it surprise you to the upside? Yeah. Look. Okay. So. The soil sampling obviously um, is, is quite a labour intensive process. We're really lucky up here uh, at our flagship project, Mount Chalmers, that we've had some great explorers that, um, that explored this site some 40 plus years ago. Uh, and and um, one of them particularly called Geo Pico had about six um, you know, geologists um, working on the ground, just mapping and sampling uh, around this, this high grade historic mine. And so that, that data has never actually um, appeared in a digital format where you can really use it to, for, for drill targeting and whatnot. So, so we've, got a, we've got a great team at QMines and, 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 um, and we've had quite a number of people uh, working on digitising this large soil data set for about you know, six or nine months now, even before we listed. And so that's what we announced yesterday. And, and the, the really exciting thing from our perspective is it's, it's really, I suppose, showing that there are multiple deposits around this existing um, Mount Chalmers mine. Uh, and, and for those of you listeners who may not be aware, it's, it's what, what we call a VHMS deposit, um, you know, which basically means they, uh, these type of deposits typically occur in multiple deposits within a cluster. Uh, and so we're, we're certainly seeing that up here at, um, at Mount Chalmers. So, uh, so really exciting results yesterday. One of those soil anomalies was actually uh, 10 kilometres long by two kilometres wide. So That's ridiculous. Yeah, it is. It is really large anomalism. Uh, and we've got four of these um, you know, new, new um, soil anomalies. Right. Uh, and they, they appear very similar to the soil um, signature of Mount Chalmers before it was actually mined as well. So... Whilst it's early days, it's, um, it's, I think, starting to demonstrate that this asset has a lot more to go and a lot more scale potential, which we're really excited about. Andrew, when you decided, you know, even before the IPO, before the listing, uh, when you got your hands on Mount Chalmers, because it's been in other people's hands before, yep. what was it that you could see attracted you to, to, to this area? And did you, know, did you know that this would be a VHMS deposit that would have clusters and you thought... You know what? It's not just Mount Chalmers. This is going to be other areas that we can look for, and it appears to be quite a good area to 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 yeah. explore in. Yeah. Well, a couple of quick things. So Queensland, if you strip out Olympic Dam out of South Australia's production, which is really an, an outlier, um, you know, Queensland really is the place to be to find large copper and gold mines. You know, there's 13 T1 mines. It represents, you know, well over sort of 30% of, um, you know, Australia's um, copper production. Uh, and it's it's just really the place to find you know um, big copper. So so when we when we sold the gold business last year um, out to a large private equity group in WA, we deliberately made the pivot over to Queensland. So that that's okay. So just one. just for those people that are listening, that was Alt Resources, which was gold in WA, that got sold to private equity, and then you decided to go and look in Queensland because you're going, you know what? Yeah. Where do you go looking for copper gold? Where there's other <laughs> copper gold projects. <laughs> That's right. We, we found in the last year that WA was getting quite tough. Um, you know, there was, there was a lot of, uh, 
you know, the workforce is, you know, is very, um, well, there's, you know, obviously a lot of mines that are sort of yeah. uh, producing, going really well over there. It's hard to get assays through the labs, hard to get drill rigs. So we, we deliberately wanted to move over to Queensland. Um, and, and so, you know, I think, I think the other thing that we saw at Mount Chalmers was, it, you know, it sounds simple, but it just was near surface and had some really, really high grade, um, you know, and, and we always like, I suppose, uh, Brownfields historic producers because they they tick a lot of boxes from a risk perspective. So we yeah. know it's obviously been economic at some point, in, you know, in a previous cycle, and um, we know that technically it generally means there's less challenges, and it, it's obviously you know it's produced successfully at some point. So, um, but you know the, the guys that um, that had this before, we we after doing a bit of work, we really just don't believe they they really understood what they had, uh, and it wasn't until we started this digitization process. That we started to unlock, you know, additional deposits uh, around this mine and started to demonstrate the potential here. So, so it was a combination of combination of wanting to be in Queensland, a combination of, you know, this is a high grade historic producer, and the fact that it's a VMS deposit told us that we thought there would be a lot more, um, you know, potential discoveries that we could make as as we started to roll out our, you know, exploration strategy. So, you mentioned a moment ago that one anomaly, I'm going to repeat it. 10 kilometres long by two kilometres wide. Have you ever seen something as ridiculous as that? Because that's um, massive. Yeah, it is, it's, it is really exciting. Um, you know, and to give your, re, your viewers a, a bit of context, I suppose, the Mount Chalmers deposit is probably about one and a half to two kilometres, you know, in, in width. So, yeah. um, so, you know, we think that's a potential to be, you know, multiple sort of Mount Chalmers lookalikes in the region. Um, so, um, so yeah, so it's definitely very large, uh, but there's also a number of other um, anomalies around that mine, including three exploration targets that, um, that we've identified. So it's not, there's not only one very large one, there's a, there's a number of these, which, um, you know, uh, which I think will bode well for, um, you know, our exploration program going forward. It's sounding pretty excited. And Andrew, I know that you're quite often, you're a, a little bit measured, but it sounds to me you're pretty happy about what's going on there. You've got a couple of rigs on site at the moment. Drilling, just talk us through the drilling and what investors can hope to hear in the coming months from Q Mines. Yeah, good question. So we've, we've obviously already completed our maiden diamond drilling program. We, yeah. we initially drilled after we listed 11 holes and they were, I think it's fair to say, we've got some fantastic results there. Uh, one thing that it did actually uh, demonstrate was that um, you know, this particular deposit hadn't been assayed for lead and zinc in the past. And we know VMS deposits typically have copper, gold, silver, lead, zinc. And, and so that maiden and diamond drilling program showed that there was a lot of the lead and zinc um, wasn't actually factored into the existing resource, which, which is really exciting for new shareholders because it means that that resource will likely grow in grade, but also grow in, in size and scale as well. So we're planning a resource update in the fourth quarter, um, which okay. we're working on now. So, um, so that's you know an exciting piece of news on the way. Yeah. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, we've got two rigs. We've just had a second rig um, turn up on site, which is there and drilling at the moment. And this is part of a very large, uh, I suppose, um, drilling program of about thirty thousand meters or thirty kilometers of drilling uh, that we're planning to do, you know, in and around that mine site. So. So lots of lots of you know um, you know drill results on their way, and that provides you know for, for me as a promoter that's that's quite exciting because it, it provides our shareholders uh, with a lot of leverage to that exploration success, and yeah. so more meters more meters basically means more chance of success. So um, so that's that's a really um, exciting sort of um, part of our story. But I think finally the other thing that is really um, uh, quite the other great thing about VMS deposits is they typically light up with what they call EM surveys. So, uh, so we've got a large um, airborne EM, which basically stands for electromagnetic survey, um, where we'll fly a helicopter over our, our tenement package, um, which will give us a lot more data on, on, you know, hopefully additional deposits around this mine. So, so we've got quite a few things on the way uh, that, um, that I think, you know, will give our, our shareholders lots of leverage to that exploration success. Uh, Andrew, a couple of questions for you. First of all, location-wise, um, it's still early days. You know, as yep. I said at the start, you've been listed for three months, and these things take time to work out the best yep. uh, best areas to drill, etc. Yep. But down the track, 
Are you, have you got power? Have you got water? Where are you location-wise? Yeah, good question. So we're, we're about 17 kilometres out of the regional town of Rockhampton, uh, which is uh, close to the coast in Queensland. It's about, for those of your listeners who don't know, it's about eight hours north of Brisbane. Uh, so we're in a great location. It's a, quite a large regional town, so we've got a ready-made you know, workforce there. That, oh, um, you know, and we're, we're hiring as, as many local uh, contractors and individuals as we can up there. Um, but uh, but in terms of infrastructure, we're, we're spoiled. Um, you know, being a historic mine, we've got you know you mentioned power. We've got power to the front gate. Wow. Uh, we just we just acquired 130 acres of ground around the mine site. Uh, where it comes with a house, where we're housing a lot of our staff on site, which is saving us on little things like um, you know um, accommodation costs and that sort of thing. Uh, but we've also got you know potable water on site. We've got um, uh, the the house comes with a a small solar farm and a wind turbine and a battery backup so where it's 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 off grid um and so you're uh, a green you're going to be a green energy mine yeah look it's a big part of our ethos that we we want to you know two two key things that we've that i think define us as a business and our values are you know working with the local community up there and also you know trying to develop this in a more sustainable way so you know, mining can be seen as a an exploration as a you know, I suppose historically as a dirty business, and I think that's that's starting to really change. And there's some great you know, companies out there leading the way, and hopefully we can uh, we can do our part as well to to show that we can we can hopefully eventually produce a, a copper product that's um, that's certainly you know greener and less carbon um, you know, and uses less carbon and whatnot. So um, so it's so we're working on those things behind the scenes. Okay, can you talk to a little bit to our listeners about the grades that you're finding at the moment? Because grade is important, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> grade is important um, because it, it basically improves economics uh, and therefore hopefully you know, has a, a correlation between improved share price. Um, you know, uh, we've, we've got a deposit that's, that's flat lying. It's under uh, existing two pits. Uh, and, and it was historically mined at about 2% copper uh, and about 3.6 grams gold and, and small silver credit of about 19, uh, 19 grams per tonne silver. So, so okay. what does that mean? It basically means it's, it's quite a high grade product, uh, high grade um, you know, mine. And, uh, and that will effectively mean that the economics from uh, the amount of tonnes of your mine should be superior to, to obviously a low grade mine. So, the key for us is really to now demonstrate sufficient scale. Um, you know, we've, we've got about 73,000 tonnes of copper uh, under those pits, which has a, a valuation of, in a gross sense of just under a billion dollars at current copper prices. Um, but okay. we want to try and get to about that 200,000 tonne mark. Uh, we think that's a, you know, a, I suppose a level which will um, add a lot of value for our shareholders, but ultimately could get to a mining situation. So that's, that's really the, the internal goal, I suppose. So, um, so we're working towards that. And that's what a lot of our exploration efforts um, looking to try and you know, define. So location wise, good infrastructure, you've got it there. Uh, you, you, you think you're probably going to do a resource upgrade in the fourth quarter, yep. decent grades. Any challenges out there for you? Yeah, look, um, being candid, COVID's been a little bit of a challenge. I think it's, it's a challenge that we're all experiencing. You know, it's, um, you know, it's hard being locked down and, you know, I know I'd, I like to get out and talk to uh, a lot of uh, investors. So it's, we're sort of doing a lot more things via Zoom at the moment. But, um, we're, but we're really lucky, Kerry. We've because we've got that um, you know that house on site. We're uh, and we're, we're adding to that at the moment. We're just looking at um, picking up some more uh, dongers so we can hold more staff on site. Uh, but that's allowing us to, I suppose, operate a lot more freely than, than others. You know, especially we're hiring local people and we're not bringing yeah. them in from the big the big cities, which are. Uh, which some of them are locked down at the moment. So, so we're we're trying to sort of build a business that you know, I suppose, um, doesn't you know, isn't uh, dependent on a lot of these um, you know these these issues that are going on. Uh, but uh, but so far so good. Well, given I've got you on uh, on the screen right now, what can investors, those who are current shareholders and those that are watching and thinking, hmm, Q mine sounds interesting. What can they expect apart from, of course, the resource upgrade in fourth quarter? What's yeah. the news flow for the rest of this year? Yeah, you know, I think just you know, looking at a slightly different way, what 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 makes us different? And I think that the key things are the scarcity factor in copper. You know, everyone knows about these fantastic, um, you know, this this copper demand profile that you know we're seeing at the moment. You know, there's there's obviously 
we're going through a, what I call a, a, a paradigm shift in the way we use and consume energy. Uh, and, and that's going to require a lot more copper. Yeah. And I think, you know, it doesn't matter which analyst you talk to out there, you know, the copper price and, and certainly copper demand is, uh, is, is going to rise over the, over the coming years. Uh, all at a time when copper supply is quite constrained, you know, there's, there hasn't been many um, large copper mines discovered in the last five years that are really, you know, replacing a lot of these old tired mines, particularly out of, out of South America. Yeah. But, I, but I think the other thing that's really exciting from my perspective, you know, being a former analyst is, is the fact that there's this scarcity factor in copper that you just don't see in other metals. Uh, so if you just, if you just look at the ASX at the moment, you know there's there's probably you know 30 to 40 uh, copper focused explorers, developers, and producers. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the gold space, there's probably you know two to three hundred. So so what we're trying to do as a business to differentiate ourselves is to try and move as, from a brownfields explorer into a developer, and we think right. that'll have a you know a quite a meaningful um, you know revaluation of our stock and and add a lot of value for our shareholders. So. So we've got a obviously a, a mine that's uh, that's historically produced that's high grade, uh, and we're starting to demonstrate that we think from these announcement yesterday on the soils that there's a lot more scale potential here. So we're on a really you know only three months listed, but on a really exciting path, um, you know, and and at a time when you know copper demand's rising and and there's you know some real challenged sort of supply um, constraints out there. So so I think well, that, that yeah. So I think I that's can, I, real I do. I do think that you've done so much work, but it would be remiss of me not to finish up with this, Andrew. Yep. Three reasons why right now is a good time for investors to get excited and, and shareholders to get excited about what QMines are doing because you're you're running hard. Yeah. So what are the three reasons they should sit up and take notice of QML right now? Yeah, good question. So, so really, it's about this leverage to exploration success. We're we're a really highly active exploration business. Um, that, that's a lot more de-risk than your average greenfields explorer because we are a historic mine. We've got a, a large resource already there, and we're just trying to add to that resource. So, there's a lot of known, uh, you know, factors here. Um, the second thing is, as I mentioned before, that scarcity of copper. I think if we can get to to become a a, a copper developer, a copper and gold developer. Um, that'll really, you know, um, you know, I suppose be a, a very good um, value catalyst for our story. And finally, I think, um, you know, the, the fact that our, our particular deposit is, is one of the higher grade VMS deposits globally, particularly by gold grade, um, I think really bodes well for um, potentially future economics and, and whatnot uh, of this story, which hopefully will transition into, you know, stronger share pricing and things over time. So, so we, we're really um, trying to be quite different as a business and, um, you know, and differentiate ourselves. And I think, you know, I think the, the first drill results we received have been fantastic. Uh, and, and these soil anomalies um, that we've announced yesterday, I think really demonstrate that this is on the right path and, and, um, and moving forward. So, yeah, so a lot more to, lot more to do, you know, a lot more to go, but certainly early signs are very encouraging. On the path to development, not leaving any soil anom anomaly under his feet. Andrew Spark, Chairman of QMines. So before, ladies and gentlemen, ASX code is QML. Check him out. Clearly on the path to development. Andrew Spark, thanks for joining me on Small Caps today. Thanks, Gary. Good to see you, mate.